Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. When we install Active Directory on our very first domain controller, we create a forest and a domain. So our forest would be this circle and our domain would be this triangle. A forest is going to be a single active directory. So it's the largest container you can think of in Active Directory and we're going to put or create domains within this forest. Now if we created another forest it would be a completely separate copy of Active Directory and we could manipulate that forest but it would in no way affect this forest. So a forest is your largest single unit that you're going to put domains in and it's one copy of Active Directory. Now we create domains within this forest and we can create multiple domains that share the same namespace for example itdvds.local and a subdomain here is dev.itdvds.local when we do that we create what's called a tree so this contiguous namespace is going to be a tree within our forest now we can also create other domains that are not in the same namespace within our forest for example corp.com and there really is no advantage to creating a tree in a forest. So this dev.itdvds.local domain doesn't share anything special with itdvds.local. That's just a design choice. There's still transitive trusts between all of the domains in your forest. And we'll talk about transitive trusts and other types of trusts later on. But basically it allows a user in one domain to authenticate in another domain. All of the domains in our forest are going to share certain aspects of Active Directory. The first one they're going to share is a common schema. And the Active Directory schema is basically what defines all of the objects in Active Directory. So let's say we have a user in Active Directory. That user has an address field, it has a password, it has a first name field, a last name field, and the reason it has those fields is because those fields are described in the Active Directory schema. So all of the domains in our forest are going to share that same schema. And sometimes when we install applications, things like Microsoft Exchange, we actually extend the schema and add new objects or new fields. And when we do that, it affects all of the domains in our forest because all of, all of those domains share the same schema. All the domains in our forest are also going to share a common configuration directory partition. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the Active Directory partitions later on. But basically on each of our domain controllers we have an Active Directory database and that's held in one file. But in that file we have logical partitions. And this one in particular, the configuration directory partition, is where information about how our whole forest is configured. So for example our sites, which we're going to talk about later on, our site links, replication connections, things like that. All that information is held in our configuration directory partition and that is going to be the same on every domain controller in our forest. So even if it's a different domain, it's still going to have the same configuration directory partition. Also, all of our domains in our forest are going to share a common global catalog. And we'll talk a lot about global catalogs later on. All of the domains in our forest are also going to share forest-wide operations masters. So we're going to have a domain controller that is going to be the schema master, which is an operations master role. And we're going to talk about these a little bit later on as well. And also that same domain controller, or it could be another domain controller, could be the domain naming master which is another operations master role but the important thing to know is there's only going to be one domain controller for each of these roles or it can be the same domain controller but we aren't going to have multiple domain naming masters in our forest or multiple schema masters in our forest there's only going to be one 
Now there are some other Operations Master roles that we're going to talk about in a bit that will be unique to each domain. So each domain will have its own Operation Master. For example, the PDC Emulator Operations Master role, each domain is going to have their own. But Schema Master, Domain Naming Master, only one per forest. Also the trust configuration, each of the domains in our forest, as I mentioned earlier, is going to have a transitive trust between it. So a domain, a user in one domain can authenticate in a, an in, in a different domain that's in the same forest. Now let's talk about domains. Now why, why would we want to create multiple domains? Well, that's a completely individualized design decision. Your company may be rather large and you may only have one domain. But sometimes if we have a large company that is in multiple locations, we may want to break that up into multiple domains and there are a couple of reasons for that. One is replication. Our Active Directory database has a domain directory partition that is replicated between all of our domain controllers in our domain. So if we have slow WAN links between, let's say, an office in New York and an office in Phoenix, we may want to make two different domains so that if that domain directory partition is very large, it's not replicated over that WAN link. Another reason is security. This is not only going to be administrative delegation, but also some of our security policies can actually only be set at the domain level. Things like password policies. Although now we have fine-grained password policies that help us so that you know we can assign different password policies to different groups, but it's just that we can only assign it to groups. We can't assign it to an OU. And it this might be a bit confusing right now, but when we get into group policy, we'll see exactly how that's going to work. But also account lockout policies, uh, Kerberos ticket policies, these are only going to be able to be set at the domain level. The next reason is authentic authentication. All of our users are going to authenticate to domain controllers in the same domain. Now we're, we're going to create sites, site links that can help us make sure that Let's say a user in New York isn't authenticating to a domain controller in Phoenix. But when it comes to resource access, by default, users in one domain cannot access resources in another domain unless they are explicitly given the appropriate permissions. And finally, trust boundaries. We can actually create trusts between one domain and another domain or one domain and even another domain in another forest. So we may have multiple domains, but let's say we don't want all of the domains in our forest to trust a domain outside of our forest. Well, that may be a reason to break up Active Directory into another domain or create another domain in your forest.